Well, praise the Lord, saints. Once again, I am just glad to greet you in Jesus' name as we continue uh, our study on the person, the power, uh, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, earlier this week, we talked about uh, God's progressive revelation uh, through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I hope that you've been blessed by that. Uh, and we left off dealing with Jesus uh, being our teacher in St. John 14, uh, where he challenged them about his end of his ministry on earth. He had announced to them he was in his ministry on earth, that he was going to leave them, and they were troubled. You know, St. John 14 is one of the most intimate passages of scriptures you can find in the Bible, because he's about to leave them, have been with them for three and a half years. But we talked about that in this context, that the Lord said, uh, I have to leave to go to the Father. Um, and so we are beginning to learn how the Lord shows himself to us uh, in various ways. Uh, and in St. Uh, John 14, remember, they have known him for three and a half years. They spend time with Jesus, but now he's going to do something different. And he always prepares them with teaching. So let me just read that part of the scripture to you, because it's here that Jesus begins to reveal the whole issue of the promise of the Holy Spirit. Look what he says in St. John uh, chapter 14, beginning with verse number 16, says these words. He says, well, really verse 15, if you love me, he says, keep my commandments and I will pray the father that he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Watch this verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Why? because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, talking now to the 12, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Notice again, I'm going to send you another, as the Father, send you another comforter, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because the world does not see him, does not recognize him. But you see him, because he dwelleth with you, but shall be in you. To cement it, verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jesus here is announcing his leaving, but his, he's announcing it in preparation of them to know that when I leave you physically, I'm coming back in a different way. Now watch this. I asked the question. What can be more exciting, more affirming, more powerful than actually living with Jesus? They lived with him for three years. They, they saw him at the beginning of his earthly ministry all the way to now in the upper room. They saw him doing mighty miracles, raising the dead, healing the sick, feeding thousands, just miracle after miracle. What could be greater than physically living with Jesus? Well, there is something greater. He says, not only is it going to be greater, You'll be greater. Why? Because I go to my Father. He again is talking about sending back the Holy Spirit. He says, he calls it the promise of the Father, but he's going to ask the Father to send back to them. He says, and you know him because he's been with you, but he shall be in you. So what is he saying? Not another God, not a different kind of God, but the Holy Spirit is a different relationship with God. Listen, brothers and sisters, you and I need to understand that in this dispensation, we should know God intimately, and he does not just come by to visit us. He comes to dwell in us, and he cannot do that as Jesus, uh, the, the God-made man, because he's in a singular place. But once he completes the work of redemption, goes to Calvary, overcomes death and the grave. He's sending back the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, simply got Jesus Christ in another form to what? He said, right now I'm with you, but then I'll be in you and I will never leave you. So again, a deeper relationship, one that every individual Christian can be indwelt by the power and the presence of God in the Holy Spirit. So that's the first part of our teaching this week. We talked about again in St. John 14, what the Lord said. But notice something. 
he tells them, not only is he coming back in the Holy Spirit, but he gives them what he, he, he promises them something called the promise of the Father. Same thing as the Spirit of Truth. Same thing as the Comforter. We'll talk about those things in a couple of weeks. This, this paraclete, this comforter, this intercessor. But right now he calls it the promise of the Father. And I think it's so exciting as God unveils himself again. So we're in, we're in John 14. But, but I want to go with you with two scriptures that I want to uh, end our teaching with for the day found in the book of St. Luke and then the book of Acts. You do know that the gospel of Luke was written by Luke, the beloved physician. But he also wrote the epistle or the acts of the Holy Spirit or the acts of the apostles. So when you read Luke, it ends in chapter 24. And then you read Acts chapter one, it is Luke part two. Look what Jesus promises to them and he fulfills it. He promises to them, he reminds them in the last chapter of the book of Luke. That's because chapter 24 of Luke is about after Jesus' resurrection. He's been to Calvary, he's overcome death, and now he appears back to the apostles to again teach them new things and reinforce what he's taught them so that they'll be ready for the next dispensation which is the Holy Spirit. Look what he says in Luke chapter 24. Go down to verse number, uh, I believe it's 44. I remember studying this uh, as a young Christian. It was always to me very exciting. The 24th chapter uh, of Luke or the post-resurrection chapter about Jesus. Look what he says in verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you. Wow. Before his, before his crucifixion, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Again, these are the words that I spoke to you when I was yet with you before my crucifixion, that all things must be fulfilled. They must come to pass, which were written in the law of Moses. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch, the law of Moses, and in the prophets. You know the prophets? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. So law of Moses, Pentateuch, all the prophets, he says, and in the Psalms or the books of poetry, right? Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. What he's saying then, he's talking about something about what he promised them. He promised them that he's now fulfilling all of the scriptures. The Old Testament, in other words, was written about Jesus. And Jesus here is opening up their understanding. Verse 45, then opened he their understanding that he might understand the scripture. Does it behoove Christ to suffer and die? Repentance, misapprehension to be preaching his name among all nations? Begin at Jerusalem, and behold, I send unto you the promise of my Father. So here, he tells them, post-resurrection, that he is sending back the promise of the Father. They are to go to Jerusalem and wait to be endued with power from on high. What a great revelation of God. Father, Son, now indwelling Holy Spirit, the power of God. So powerful because now they're going to receive from him a fulfillment of something that was promised is now going to be fulfilled after his resurrection. Then he ascends up into heaven. He is glorified to send back the Holy Spirit. Again, I hope that you'll continue with us as we look at this. God is progressively revealing himself. And in this day and age in the Holy Spirit, you can know God in an intimate way. You can know God in an individual way. You can know God because he comes to dwell in you, to walk in you. I encourage you to continue with us in these teachings and encourage your family and friends to join you as well as we go to the next iteration of God's revelation uh, in the Holy Spirit. So again, bless you during this holiday season. I hope you've been blessed. I hope that you'll become involved in our ministry as we do our outreach during the holiday seasons. Make sure that no one is left without a warm coat, that people are fed, that the children are made happy with the gifts and toys. Be a part of what God's doing. Look, 
pray for us, my wife and I, as we pray for you. The Lord bless you and keep you and encourage you is my prayer in Jesus' name.